In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to conduct a randomization test by hand. Typically, they're done through computer simulations, but we're going to work through a very small process just to understand the reasoning or the logic behind randomization tests. We're going to do this through a specific example. Schistosomiasis is a disease that occurs in humans and is caused by parasitic flatworms. When people are exposed to unclean water, these worms enter the skin and lay eggs. It affects about 200 million people worldwide and is a serious problem in Sub-Saharan Africa, South America, China, and Southeast Asia. This disease can cause death, but more commonly results in just debilitating systems arising primarily from these eggs being lodged in the liver, spleen, and intestines. Currently, there is one drug, praziquantel, that is commonly used for treatment of schistosomiasis. It's inexpensive and effective. However, many organizations are concerned about relying on a single drug to treat a serious disease that affects so many people worldwide. In 2007, several researchers published a work on a promising new drug called K11777, which, in theory, might also treat schistosomiasis. In this presentation, we will use a randomization test to determine whether this new drug helps to stop the schizome worms from growing. In one phase of this study, 10 female lab mice were deliberately infected with the schizome parasite. Five mice were randomly assigned to a treatment group, and the other five were then put into a control group. After they were infected, five mice were given the treatment injected daily for several days while the other five mice in the control group were just injected with plain water. After several days, the researchers euthanized the mice and measured the number of worms in their livers. As you can see from the data below, the five mice that had the treatment had a much lower mean than the control group. In this example, we observe that the difference between these group means is 7.6. The number of parasitic worms found in the liver naturally varies from mouse to mouse. So it could just be possible that this difference of 7.6 is due to random chance. Could just by chance a larger number of worms randomly been placed into the control group? This position that claims that it was only occurred by chance is called the null hypothesis. And we're going to test this null hypothesis to see how likely it is to be true. To determine if a difference of 7.6 can be simply due to chance, we will use 10 cards to represent 10 female mice. If the treatment is not effective, we can consider the cards to be all from the same group, each with a known worm count. We will then randomly, just randomly select five cards and assign the first five to the treatment group, and the following cards will be considered the control group. By doing this, then, we take the treatment group and the control group, calculate the averages, and in this randomization, we found that the difference between the treatment and control was only 0.4. That's much smaller than the difference we observed of 7.6. Well, let's try it again. We randomly assign the cards to treatments and control groups, calculate the averages, and here we found a difference of 2. And let's do it again. Have 10 cards randomly pick five for the treatment group and five for the control group. Calculate the difference. Here we observe a difference of negative 2.8. If this difference of 7.6 is unlikely to occur by chance, in our three trials we didn't get anything close to 7.6, if it's unlikely we can reject the null hypothesis and include that the drug truly is effective. So conducting a randomization test by hand is useful for understanding the process. However, three tests certainly is not enough to see if it's very likely. We'd probably want to do this a thousand or ten thousand times. So we're going to use software to actually calculate how likely it is that if we just do this randomization process, how often would we observe a difference as large or larger than 7.6? When I used a computer to simulate this randomization process, we did it by hand three times, but with a computer, I did it ten thousand times. And in those 10,000 iterations, only 281 times did we observe a difference of 7.6 or more. In other words, there's less than a 3% chance of observing a difference this large. This tells us that since it is so unlikely to observe a difference of 7.6 or more just by random chance, 
it's unlikely that the null hypothesis is true. Thus, we make the conclusion that the null hypothesis is not correct in favor of the alternative hypothesis. We conclude that the treatment made a difference in the number of worms that we observed in the livers of these female mice. In the next session, we will discuss how to use a computer to calculate this probability when we want to do it many, many times, not just two or three times by hand.